rice cookers. Welcome back. Today we are finishing up where we left off in part one. So if you missed that, there'll be a little uh, link, whatever around here somewhere, or just look it up in the playlist. That means finishing up the cutting and installation of the K20 oil pump, uh, the new guide, oil pump chain, setting the timing, front cover on, sump back on, you know, the works, pretty much everything but the, um, the rocket cover back on. So yeah, enjoy. All right, this is a 12 mil from a K-series intake manifold to the head. It's perfect thread pitch. Just gonna cover it in some of this three bond. And that's about all it needs. Before I put the windage tray, I need to clean off all of the um, old silicon from the uh, sump. All this along here, because once the tray's in here, it's quite close to the edge and it's gonna make life a little bit more difficult. So. Now that the surface is clean, you put the windage tray from the uh, K20 on it. Um, if you're looking up anything on this in a service manual, it's actually called a baffle tray, I believe. Um, this notch or this hole here lines up with the 12 mil that you just put in to block off that passageway. And these are the six 10 mils from before, where these started and then come back with the torque spec. Okay, so the torque spec is 12 newton meters or 115 inch pounds. Now we can move on to the oil pump, which is gonna be fun because it involves cutting some stuff. I've never done this before, but as you can see, this isn't gonna fit on here. We have to clearance this up along here and around here. And I don't know if you can see on video, but right here, there's a tiny little step, there's another tiny little step there. Before we start cutting on this thing, we're going to tape up these ports because we don't want any filings and falling in there. And tape up this one too. That one, that one, and that one. Most people do this with a angle grinder. But I'm actually going to try it with a Dremel with a little cutoff wheel. Battery's almost dead. Uh, not really getting that far through it, so maybe the Dremel isn't the best. 
but it's also um, battery, you know, I've got a plug-in one I can use, I guess. have enough power. I need a plug-in one. Went and picked up my plug-in Dremel because the other one battery power wasn't really strong enough for what I'm doing. So let's see how this goes. What the fuck? Holy shit, the bed. Well, that fucking scared the shit out of me. The chuck came apart. Pause. Right, just gotta clean down all these um, aluminium shavings and then uh, we'll go for a test fit on the block. We're pretty good everywhere else. It's just right in the back there. And there, and maybe a little bit down there. Try again. So yeah, we'll just go a little bit higher where that blue line is, and we're gonna take some more off across this whole thing. So as you can see, you have to take this down pretty close to the, um, pretty close to the threads. But, many people have done this with no issues, so should be fine. The uh, part number for this will be in the uh, description on the video. Just like that. These are the two 12 mils from the original K24. We've got one long and one short. Long one goes over to the tool side, short one, short side. You'll have to find a suitable 10 mil in your stash for this back bolt. The uh, front two bolts are 16 foot pounds or 22 newton meters. The 10 mil at the back is eight foot pounds or 12 newton meters. And that's your oil pump torqued and uh, finished. Next we have the K20 oil chain guide, which is two five millimeter Allens. And the torque spec for those is 8.7 foot pounds or 12 newton meters. Oil pump tensioner, this one's off the K24. I'm just reusing it. The oil pump tensioner is 8.7 foot pounds or 12 newton meters. 
Now I need to clean up the surface here. Same process as the sump. You can use a blade and then scotch bright or just use a sandpaper. One dot here and one dot here. And then you've got some discolored chains, which in my case are kind of a blackish color. Rotate that back. Just gonna put this guide on and that'll help with keeping it in time. It won't skip or anything weird. There's a little dot right there. And then there's another chain with a black link in it. So that has to line up with that. Before we get to that link though, we need to get this to um, TDC. Oh, too far. 19 mil on the crank bolt there. That should be lined up. And now we'll go over to this dot on the chain. It's a bottom chain lined up with the dot on the um, the crank, and both of these are lining up pretty good. It's time to put some tension on this. The tensioner is 8.7 foot pounds or 12 newton meters. The intake cam bolt is a 17, it's 112 newton meters or 83 foot pounds. And I'm going to try and do this in place by using a um, adjuster crescent here to brace. Oh. No, that's not quite enough leverage. I need a, a bigger one. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh, shit yeah. The top chain guide for the cams is 22 newton meters or 16 foot pounds. Reclean the surface and then we'll put the uh, front timing cover back on. I'm going to go over it with a 3M alcohol wipe. Just to get any last little bits. I really don't want this leaking once you got it all back together. that I'll wipe down too and the actual timing cover before we put the timing cover on we put this timing wheel on or the trigger wheel whatever you want to call it it's got an engraving on it there that says outside so you can't really get it wrong So these odd shaped bolts, or the odd two out of the lot, apparently go on the bottom here, and I guess they help to align everything. The front cover is 8.7 foot-pounds or 12 newton meters. Tensioner cover is also 8.7 or 12. Torque this to 12 newton meters. 
just like the rest of the tens. Now that the front cover's on, it's time to move on to the sump. So I'm just gonna go around it with some scotch bright, which I've already done on some of it, and then move on to this portion with a wire wheel. Just got the Dremel here and um, a wire wheel attachment. Got this mostly cleaned up with that wire wheel and the scotch bright. Just soaked it down with some degreaser, agitated it a bit, and I'm going to take it outside and um, hose it down, and we'll move on to preparing the block and turning the engine over. All right, just wash this out outside with a pressure washer. It's all clean and dry now. Last step is to go over it with an alcohol wipe, or just alcohol on a rag if you've got some in a bottle or something doesn't have a gasket so it relies on sealant so it's pretty important to have really clean mating surfaces. All right let's move on to the bottom of the block. Right, let's check some free bond on this. Seems like a nice even bead to me. Onto the engine. I'll just button up all these 10 mils and um, come back and talk it up. Torque spec is 8.7 or 12 newton meters. Last couple of things to do on this engine, the um, crank position sensor, just go with 12, a bit like the rest of the 10 mils on this, seems to be pretty suitable torque spec for this. Just got to make sure that keyway is lined up. Right, that's going to do it for today. That's pretty much what we want to cover on the engine for now, apart from maybe a few accessories in the future, but we'll cover those uh, later on. Next up, we've probably got the RD5 CRV, which I had to purchase just for the all-wheel drive transmission. So we'll be pulling that apart. We've also got the S2000 over here. That gearbox is uh, waiting on a couple bits and pieces. So we'll get an update on what the noise was and putting the gearbox back in. And as always, if you like this content, don't like it, don't share it. Don't comment on it and especially don't subscribe.